Today I'm going to, I've been charged with the, uh, the, the duty of informing you as to the nature of uh, children's early memory development. And I'm going to do that in two-part harmony. The first part consists of another two-part harmony, which is uh, how do we study uh, young children's memory development. And I'm going to talk a little bit about very early memory, the division between implicit and explicit memory. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about autobiographical memory and when we think autobiographical memory begins. This will be followed quickly by uh, another two-part harmony in which I will discuss uh, memory for trauma and the effects of trauma on memory. Okay, two different things, hopefully. So hopefully throughout this process you'll uh, learn something. I've learned a lot already today, uh, and I don't know if I can fit much more into my brain, but <laughs> it be like Homer Simpson. I have to lose something first before I can put something new in. <laughs> Right, so the first bit, memory development. Unitary or multiple memory systems. We've already had discussion this morning about the differences between implicit and explicit memory. And from a me from memory development point of view, this is not as clear cut as uh, we would like it to be. Some people believe that there are in fact multiple memory systems. In fact, there could be anywhere up to 10, 15 different memory systems. Uh, but let's take the, the division of two memory systems versus a single memory system that can be tapped by different tasks. So those of us who believe in a unitary memory system would say that there's only the one system, but we can have access to it implicitly, that is, non-consciously, or we can have access to it explicitly, and maybe we can find access to the same memory both ways, okay? depending upon the cues that are available to us in our environment and a number of other factors. Other people believe that they're actually two very different systems and that those two systems are dissociated.